Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone. Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 170 of Snack Minute. If you were with us last time, we were going through a Q&A with our colleagues, Emma and Quinn. Sit back, relax, and enjoy part two. We're going to pivot to some AI questions. So the first one is, will AI uh, take take networking jobs? It's a loaded question, but I don't, I'll don't. i answer it shortly um, in a short matter, but I don't know. It, it will not. It, it will augment and help what you do and streamline it. Um, I would never trust uh, a machine, an AI, to go and touch my production network. No matter how smart that model is, I, I don't, would I have it touch my staging to try it out? Maybe, but I don't think, I don't think you, I don't think we'll get to a point where, um, where the humans are, are replaceable, especially the network engineers. Yeah, I think that's a good take on that, Kareem. There's also a trust level, I think. So there's that trust that you talked about but the trust level ties also to that abstraction. And I think there will be an innate need for organizations to still want to know how things work, at least within our lifetimes. Computing in and of itself has been around for 80, 90 years, maybe longer. Um, and we have added abstraction layers to the way computers work that we kind of have lost some element not completely, but lost some element on how things work and just trust that they do. Um, taking some of the um, decision-making processes that happen at that level uh, would be very, I, I think scary might be the word, but I, I just don't think that there's the there's going to be that kind of commitment organizationally for people to say, yes, we definitely want to take the human out of the loop here. Um, and I think it's definitely um, worth it's worth thinking about. It'll definitely make the jobs easier, um, but I don't. I don't think it's necessarily going to take over and, and take jobs away from people. Okay. So the next, uh, I'm going to ask two questions at the same time. So the first question is: Will AI topics be included in the CCMP? And then the second question is: What certifications um, have AI topics currently? The CCNP data center will have some topics around AI infrastructure. Uh, we've already, um, we've also released the CCDE uh, AI infrastructure elective with a 3.1 release of that. So adding a separate uh, AI infra elective there. We've included some pieces in the CCNA around uh, some generative AI topics as well. I, you know, I, I think that, that what's important is there are, I'm going to go back to an analogy that Kareem loves to, you know, rib before. Um, everything's a, you know, there, everything is a duck. Every network is a duck, right? And so you have certain things that it needs to do. It needs to move data from point A to point B. It may have certain latency. So it, you know, a duck always has wings. It always has flippers. It has a bill. It quacks, those kinds of things. The same thing with networks. The, the AI infrastructure pieces are just high performance computing things that are specific to that port. So as long as you have the basics and the understanding, yes, there are some differences in the way that software pipelines and the data that needs to be moved back and forth. You've got front end and back end networks, um, different ways that data has to be stored and, and moved around. Going back to my comment about the CCNA, it's all fundamentals. And so fundamentally, if you understand how high performance computing works, it's just that little extra niche on top of it to make it AI ready because of the workloads that are being run there. Okay, so uh, we're almost at the end of my question. So the next one is, when preparing for a Cisco certification exam, uh, what study strategies do you use? Um, especially to like help you uh, retain the information and remember it. I typically feed the blueprint and my schedule to a safe AI to decide <laughs> what and how I should schedule my day. <laughs> A little joking, um, but uh, some of that is true. I, I, I tend to look at um, the blueprint and based on and go through um, which pieces of the exam blueprint I understand and know well and versus the ones that I don't. And I typically start with the ones that I don't understand and start getting, collecting the what's out there, whether it's on Cisco U or it's um, out there. Uh, on the www then from there i typically just have like a note with all the resources and i try to plan my week where i dedicate about an hour or two in my day to cover the sections that i'm not familiar with 
And once I get through those, I get I go through and review the sections that I, I know and I'm familiar with. And then I end up with at least uh, taking some type of practice exam um, towards the end once or twice prior to going into my real certification exam. I like to read. Uh, so I have a lot of study books. Going back to Kareem's point, the exam topics, first and foremost, that's, you know, here's what I need to cover, right? I read a lot of books. I read the study materials. Um, and then from there, I'll usually just take that and, and start building my own labs. And so even if something is a, is a describe or a compare blueprint verb, I still feel that it's important that I understand it well enough that I could configure or troubleshoot it. So I build a lot of labs. I have a Cisco modeling labs installation at the, my house. Uh, I used to have racks of gear um, for, for physical labbing. Um, but that was really what cemented it. And I would say, okay, I've studied this portion, whether it's switching or routing, or maybe this routing protocol, build my own lab, start it up based on the concepts that I remembered. And then if I, if it's broken or doesn't work, fix it and understand why, and we go back to the reference materials and just repeat that process over and over again, tracking that against kind of what's in the, the exam topics blueprint. I don't have any better study guides than that. <laughs> so what would you say are the most in-demand Cisco certifications at the moment? I think it's always been the CCNA. At the moment, in the past, it's always been CCNA. CCNA is is a known term and, and uh, industry certification that has been around that we've, we've updated, we've kept um, going, and it's the most popular CCNA. And it is... It, it, it gives you the foundation to everything networking. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I think the follow-ups to that would definitely be like the CCNP enterprise, probably the the enterprise core, and then the advanced routing. And I, I think that, again, goes back to the CCNA where it's the fundamentals. If you know how to configure OSPF and EIGRP and BGP, you know, whether I'm doing it in data center or service provider space or whatever, those things still apply. And so being able to 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 build those those topologies out, I think the the enterprise certs uh, or or concentrations, I should say, are, are probably the follow on to that for the for the exact same reasons. Okay, so the last couple of questions. So, what is Vim, and is it really easier uh, to use than you think? And how to exit Vim? <laughs> Press and hold the power button on your computer to exit. Uh, <laughs> no, um, uh, VI is uh, it's an old school. Linux, Unix text editor that I just, I use mostly to annoy Kareem. Much. Uh, and the fact that it's become a really popular Cisco U session uh, only adds to that and he keeps accepting it. And I, I, I don't know why. Because he likes you. <laughs> I do, it's a session that I do within Cisco U just to show how easy it is because it's it's, it's installed everywhere. Uh, any Unix or Linux installation has VI installed. You never need it until you need it. And you may only need it to do a few things, but if you can, can't use it, you're going to have a hard time. So. Uh, that was the whole purpose of the of of that session, um, and it really is easy to use. There's like seven things that you can remember, and you can edit all the files you want to almost as quickly as you can with a, a iCharm or VS Code. The funny part, the ironic part in all of this, Matt, is he struggles himself on stage while using Vim. And so, you know, and and we could <laughs> we could go through the YouTube channel and check out some of your sessions out there. Dying there. Yeah, he's he's turning. He's getting. It's getting warm in his office. Now, I can see. <laughs> and this is an excellent opportunity to say that if um, if you're watching this and a question that you have uh, wasn't answered, uh, put it in the comments of this video. But also make sure to watch the Cisco U Theater sessions from Cisco Live Amsterdam. There were 44. How to use uh, them? Is it really easier than you think? It is one of them. Um, there are 44 sessions, the most sessions of the Cisco U Theater ever. Um, the topics range from cloud, AI, Splunk, uh, cybersecurity, um, CCMP, CCNA, how to study for your exams, and um, uh, the link to the live streams will be in the description of this video. And like a huge shout out to Kareem for organizing it because it's each year, or I guess it's done three times, three? Three times a year. Yeah, each... each um, each uh, time that um, the Cisco Youth Theater sessions happen, I learn something new. Um, so I'm sure those of you watching uh, will learn something new um, from watching them as well. Yeah, thank you for that, Emma. And thanks, Snackers, for all your questions. Okay, before we wrap up this episode, I do have one last bonus question. And that question is, if the tech advocates were having a coding challenge, who would you bet on? That's a tough one. 
because I I think him I think it depends on the Cody. If we were having some terraform challenges going, Quinn, my money's on Quinn all day. If we were doing some kind of coding challenge around Python and automation, that's a hard one. I don't I don't know. What do you guys think? Who who would be if we could expand it beyond just us, my money's on Hank. I mean <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like hands down, like I, I can't compete. Actually, and Joe Clark, like that's. Oh I'd yeah. I'd like to see Ooh, a yeah. challenge between Hank and Joe Clark. Celebrity, like like, coking deathmatch challenge kind of thing. I think that would be a great snack minute idea. I want them to never speak to each other again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's a good answer. I mean, that would be my answer. I don't know. What do you guys think? I I would go with. Quinn, Hank, and Joe every day and twice on Sunday, if I'm being honest. We should put that into motion and see if we can make it happen. I'd watch. <laughs> I would watch. But then we'd have to come up with a challenge, right? True. That they wouldn't know about. And since they're the ones that usually create the challenges, that's a tough. <laughs> and, then, and then stream it and then get some bets going around it. Mm. I like well, we might get fired for that, so I don't know. Well, if we do betting, we would get fired. But let's we're not licensed in the state of Arizona to do uh, gambling. Uh, so I don't have a better answer than that. I think that that's that's a that was a great question. Though. It's something to to ponder. I think we answered all your questions, if I'm not mistaken, Emma. Was there anything else that you wanted us to answer? Nope, nope. That uh, that was everything. Okay, wonderful. And snackers, let us know. If you enjoyed this episode and you want us to do more of those, we're happy to do them. There was, that's kind of, uh, it was a fun episode. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. I definitely learned something new. And thanks to Quinn for joining us again to help us answer these questions. Thanks. Keep having me on. I'll keep showing up. Hey, Matt, has Emma been on Snack Minute before? Oh, no, she is not. What does that mean? That means that she has to answer our very special question. <laughs> uh, Emma, since this is your first time as a guest, what superpower would you choose to have and why? So I know that this is like a pretty basic answer, but it would be teleportation because it would just be so much easier to get to where you want to go. I'm reading uh, like a fantasy series right now where um, if you close your eyes and you visualize where you want to go, you you just like teleport there. Um, so I just think that would be really great. I, I'm not fond of driving, so um, that would make my life a lot easier. Makes a ton of sense. That's why it's one of the most popular answers. Yeah, actually, if you think about it, it would make for a fun uh, snack minute episode because like, I could close my eyes and teleport behind Matt and then teleport behind Quinn and then come back Are you here. coming to Cleveland? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I would love that. <laughs> all right, snackers, that's all the time we have today. Thank you for our two-parter on uh, our Q&A with Quinn, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, snackers. Thank you.